G'day everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now by the end of this video, you're going to walk away with the knowledge to be able to manage your metadata in your document libraries more effectively with document sets and a special feature called shared columns. So let's get stuck in, set things up and get configuring. So we are in a SharePoint site and I've got a document library set up just called document sets. Now the first thing obviously we need to check is to make sure that we've got our site collection feature enabled for document sets to be able to utilize these first. So to do that, we go into the site settings. So we go to site information, view all site settings. We need to go to our site collection features and just make sure that this feature called document sets is active, which it is in this site. Now I'm going to create a custom content type based off the default document set content type. So I'm gonna jump into uh, site content types and I'm going to create a content type and I'm going to call this client container. Now I'll just leave it in this custom content types category. We'll have the parent category though as document set and the content type is, it's going to inherit from the document set content type. So that's now got our custom content type created. I'm going to add two columns, all right, just for the purpose of this video. I'm going to call this client name as the first one. I'll just leave it as a text, all right? Now there are um, better ways more and more appropriate ways to do this type of thing. We could have a Microsoft list where we would look up a client name uh, from a list maybe, and then also with a client group that we're going to create here in just a second. But just for now, I'm going to keep, keep this as free text and a text column. The next one we're going to do is I am going to say client group. Uh, and again, I'm just gonna use a single line of text. All right, so that's our base content type, document set content type setup, all right? Now, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to add this to the library, all right? So I'm gonna to go to document sets, I'll go to library settings, and then I will go to more library settings, and then we will configure under advanced settings. I need to make sure that we allow management of content types at this library so that we can add our custom content types. All right, and I'll click OK. So now we've got that enabled. I'm going to add from existing content types and then I will look for client container. There it is. And I will put that across there and I'll click OK. So now we've got our document set added to our library. I can then go new client container and then I can create my document set. So I will say, um, uh, let's say uh, 2024 tax return and the client name is me and the client group is Anderson Strategic Holdings. All right, so that is our document set created. All right, so we can see there, I'm taken directly into my document set. I've got my name of the set, but I don't have the client name or the group. So we need to add that to our view. So I'll turn this, turn these two on, I'll turn modified and modified by off. And now we've got uh, those two columns added. All right, now inside of these document sets, is where we store our documents. So if we upload our uh, a couple of documents and we will see what happens, all right? So I'll just grab a few documents and we'll drag that across into the library and we'll upload them, okay? So we can see that we've got the client name and the client group visible in the view, but they're not filled out. Okay, so if we think about search um, and maybe a search page and we want to show all of the documents based on a client name or based on a client group, for example, we really want this metadata to be added to our documents as well as the document set. Now, the reason this came about is there was working or had a discovery call with a client and they had a convoluted power automate that was running constantly every five minutes to update this metadata inside of folders. So they were using a folder structure. Now, how, this, how document sets work 
is that we can uh, have what we call shared columns. So I'm going to go into my document set content type. So I'll go back into library settings. I'll go to more library settings. I'll go to my client container and you can see that here is my, my uh, settings for this particular document set. So I'll go to document set settings here. Now we can see here that underneath or inside of this, this, this setting, uh, the, the settings here, I've got client name and client group that I could use for as shared columns. So we can say select which column values for the document set should be automatically synchronized to all the documents contained in that set. Now that's at this library level, but what I want to do is I want to do this from the, uh, the the site content type level. So I'm going to go to the my site settings because what I was doing there was doing it at the list at the library level. All right, so I'm going to come up to here into my um, my content type gallery and my client content container. Uh, and I'm going to go to document set settings and here is where I can go and go to shared columns and I can tick client name and client group and I'm going to hit save. Now that's updating that document set and it's updating that content type. Now let's go back into my document sets. I'm going to go back into my document set here. Now I'm just going to delete this, right? So let's delete this and we'll create a new document set. So I will go client container. Let's call this, let's do the same thing. So I'll go 24 uh, tax return. I've got my name and I've got uh, Anderson Strategic Holdings as the client group. Because in this case, there could be a number of different families or clients that are part of the same client group as well. All right, so we'll hit save. So that's now created. Now let's add and drag across some documents now that we've got that shared column structure set up. So you can see there that that metadata, because they're shared from the document set level, is automatically set for us. And there's no need for any type of automation or any other type of process to update that metadata. It's always shared or that, that the values are shared from the top level of our document set. So the same thing would happen if we had a new document set. So let's go for a, let's create a new one. So let's go for 2025 tax returns um, and we'll do the same client name and we'll go the same, um, the same client group as well. But let's call this uh, a different family member. All right, so we'll go like so and we'll hit save. So now we've got our two document sets. All right, so we've got our 2024 tax return for a different client um, and the, the client group there as well. So let's jump into here and I'm going to drag across just to show you that we do have that metadata coming across. So we should have a different client name here. So you can see there, client name, but the same client group, all right? So that is the power of shared columns in document sets, as opposed to, let's say, a folder structure where we're storing our documents in a folder and then having some other type of automated process then on a schedule update and make sure that that metadata is updated on the documents as well. So I hope that brings you some value today. Document sets, shared columns. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.